Hello there everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today, we're going to talk a little bit about the Apple Vision Pro. Now, my entire online world has been dominated by the Vision Pro for the last two weeks or so, and that makes perfect sense. This is a huge moment in tech. It's a huge moment in XR, VR, AR, MR, whatever you want to call it. Apple getting into this industry and making their own mark on this kind of technology is a huge moment. It's a big deal. And I, for one, am very happy that Apple have decided to get into this technology, into this line of work, into this medium. I'm really glad to see them here. I'm really happy that they have delivered a product that it seems a lot of people are absolutely loving. It's opened up the world of head-mounted displays and potentially VR to a lot of people. It's put it into the limelight and I will always be grateful for that because it's that effect that Apple have. Apple are one of only a few companies who can do this. They can launch a product and immediately throw it into the limelight. Put it on everyone's radar and have it appear in almost every corner of the internet. It is everywhere right now. Now over the last week or so, maybe two weeks actually, I've been watching as much coverage about the Apple Vision Pro as I can get my hands on. So I've watched a bunch of reviews, unboxings and hands-on videos from both tech and Apple focused creators, people like Marquez Brownlee, people like iJustine, people like Casey Neistat, and then also coverage from people within the VR industry. People who are enthusiasts, people who have been using this kind of tech, HMDs, for 10 years or so. People like Mike from VR Oasis, people like Matt from BMF VR, people like Sadly It's Bradley, people like uh, VR with Jasmine. So many people that I respect and no, I know a lot of these people, I've spoken to a lot of these people, and I've digested everything they've said in their reviews. I have overloaded myself with reviews, coverage, hands-on, just as much content about the Vision Pro as I can physically feed into my eye holes. And after watching all of these Apple Vision Pro videos, after subjecting myself to an absolute barrage of hands-on videos, unboxings, reviews, little snippets of experiences and showcases for apps and use cases, I've come to one very obvious conclusion. And that is that I do not need an Apple Vision Pro. I do not need to own this device, this piece of technology. And chances are, neither do you. The Apple Vision Pro doesn't fit into my everyday life in any real tangible way that I can figure out. After watching all of this coverage, after seeing all these things that people are doing with their headsets, I cannot fathom why I would spend the money to own one because it's not doing anything new for me and it's not improving upon any of the tech I currently own and the things that they are doing for me. It sits at a very strange place, and I think it will iterate into an amazing device in the future, but right now, from an early adopter standpoint, I think the only people that need to be buying this, the only people that should be buying it, and potentially the only people that are buying it, are high-level tech enthusiasts who just want to be there on the ground floor and see what Apple can do with a first-generation head-mounted display. So, in this video, I have four points four things that I want to elaborate on, four reasons as to why I truly believe I do not need an Apple Vision Pro. And chances are those reasons will probably apply to you as well. Lots of the people watching this video, lots of my audience. Now, if you have bought an Apple Vision Pro or you're going to buy one, fantastic. I have nothing against that. I have nothing against people who want to own them. This is just an opinion piece. This is just my personal opinion, and it's something I've been mulling over for the last couple of weeks. Enjoy your Apple Vision Pro. I want people to love this thing. Now, let's get the first point out of the way. This is the easiest one to address. It's the easiest one to cover, so let's just kick it to the curb straight away, straight out the gate. The price point. This thing costs 3.5k, three and a half thousand dollars. I am a normal man. I have financial responsibilities. I have bills to pay. I cannot be reckless like that with my money. I'm not YouTube rich. When I was outside of the YouTube ecosystem, I used to look in and see channels with over 100,000 subscribers and immediately think they are living the life. I bet they've got a yacht. 
and a private jet and a bunch of cars and a big house. I bet they're raking in the money. That couldn't be further from the truth. You don't make a ton of money on YouTube, or at least I don't make a ton of money on YouTube. I do make some money, but if it was my only income, I would struggle to pay my bills. For those who don't know, I work a full-time job as well as doing YouTube. I've done that for five years. I have a full-time, Monday to Friday, 8.30 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. job that I work alongside YouTube. YouTube is still a hobby to me. I love doing it. I'm passionate about it. And yes, it does make me some money. Don't get me wrong. I'm not destitute. I do live fairly comfortably, but I do have bills to pay. And I have to work two jobs to ensure that I can pay all those bills and do all the things that I want to do. Now, before someone appears in the comments and says, ah, you're just a broke bitch, I do have enough money to go and buy an Apple Vision Pro. I have savings. I am quite responsible with my money. So I could buy one if I wanted to buy one. But I can't help but look at that price point now and see it in a different light after buying my house. I saved up, scrimped and saved, put away as much money as I could for years to save a deposit for a house. And now when I see the price point of three and a half thousand dollars, all I can think is that is three months of mortgage payments for my house. It would be reckless and irresponsible of me to spend that kind of money on this device. Now, it would be different if I genuinely thought this device for that price point was going to solve a problem or enrich my life in a way that my existing tech and the existing items that I own didn't do. And this is where I can quickly move on to the next point. After seeing everything I've seen about the Vision Pro, I truly believe it will not enrich my life. It will not justify its three and a half thousand dollar price point by doing anything new that any of my other items of tech cannot do or doing anything better than my current items of tech don't already do. So that swiftly brings me on to my second point, and that's the use case of the Apple Vision Pro. Now, when Apple announced the Vision Pro and called it a spatial computing device, I will admit I chuckled quite a lot. I made some jokes online and I thought, why not call this thing a VR headset, an MR headset, an AR headset, an XR headset? Use one of the pieces of existing terminology that we've had and we've cultivated in this medium for 10 years. Why not just call it what it is? And then I saw the coverage. I saw people using it. I saw reviews. I saw people highlighting what you actually use this thing for and what this thing is actually really good at doing. And it made perfect sense. This is a spatial computing device. The Apple Vision Pro effectively wants to replace your mobile phone, your PC monitors, your television, and it wants to integrate itself into your life in a way that you would use it on a daily basis to work, to live, to digest entertainment, to watch movies, to send emails, to FaceTime people, to Skype people, to catch up on what's going on on Twitter, to do Excel spreadsheets, to edit. It wants to be your PC or an extension of your PC. And I shouldn't say PC, I should say Mac, but that tells you how non-integrated into the Apple ecosystem I guess I am. And again, lends itself to why I think this device really kind of isn't for me. Now, my view on technology is that it should always try to enrich our lives. It should help us to do something that we couldn't do without it. Or at the very least, it should help us to do something in a more efficient manner than we could do without it. So a random example that I've had floating around in my head for the last couple of days is if you're a huge coffee lover, if you love coffee, you'll probably go out and buy a nice coffee machine that can make you coffee to a high standard to allow you to have coffee shop quality coffee at home. Apologies, I'm not a coffee guy, so this is a really random example for me. Because if you're sitting there making coffee using just granules and hot water with a kettle, you know you can do it better with something else. You can buy something to enrich your life and make the experience of having coffee, a nice coffee in the morning, you can make that experience better, make it taste better, make it more efficient for you and just enrich your life. Now, I have a lot of pieces of tech that do that. Some pieces of tech exist 
simply to give me happiness. My PlayStation 5 doesn't enrich my life in any other way other than to make me happy. I turn it on, I play Spider-Man, I escape for a few hours. It's a wonderful piece of tech. My PC allows me to connect with friends on Discord. It allows me to edit these videos, record these videos, go on YouTube, play games, a whole wealth of things. The Quest 3, whether Meta likes it or not, is a fantastic gaming device, first and foremost. Yeah, it can do the multitasking, I can watch videos, I can do similar things to the Apple Vision Pro, but first and foremost, that is a great VR gaming device. All of these pieces of tech that I just mentioned serve a very distinct and obvious purpose in my life. In every single piece of media that I have seen so far of people using the Apple Vision Pro out in the wild in the real world, the best use case that everyone seems to have for this device is covering their physical space in digital screens and consuming as much media as they physically can in one go. Much like I have right now with a couple of monitors, my PC, mouse, keyboard. Is the Vision Pro going to do this? better than my physical setup already does it? Probably not, mainly because I have to have that HMD on my head and there is still so much friction about wearing a HMD, for me anyway, for long periods of time to do work, to interact with friends. I can't imagine anything worse than wearing a headset for a nine hour work day, sitting here doing emails, doing Zoom calls, checking spreadsheets. I don't want to sit here with a headset stuck to my head with a lesser field of view than my normal eyes interacting with these things on digital screens. I don't think we're there yet. We're not at a place where the form factor is appealing enough, the field of view is wide enough and the quality is high enough to do it better than my physical setup. So if the very best use case that I've seen for the Apple Vision Pro, and I'll actually tell you what the very best use case is, the best video I've seen to showcase this is a video I saw on Twitter. I'll put it on here and I'll put the user's name. But they had pinned monitors all over their house. They had a work set up with three digital monitors sitting right there so they could work. They'd pinned another monitor over by their TV where they would sit on the sofa and watch entertainment. They'd pinned another monitor in their kitchen to show them how to cook certain recipes. They'd pinned a little grocery list on their fridge. And that's all amazing. It's great that you can pin these digital assets in this physical environment and then walk around them freely. But I don't want to live my life in a HMD. For me personally, the big draw of a VR headset, the fun of a VR headset is escaping into it for an hour for two hours getting some escapism, playing some games, jumping up, increasing my fitness level, escaping into a virtual world that can take me away from the real world for a bit, and then coming back into the real world and appreciating everything we have here physically with us. I don't want to disappear into a head-mounted display for an entire day to consume all of my media in it and have it all around me, everywhere I go in my house. And that brings me on to the next point. There have always been people who will make the Black Mirror jokes and comparisons every time a new VR headset comes to market. Every time a new XR display, AR display, any head-mounted display really, every time one ships the same, oh, it's a bit Black Mirror, or oh, it's a bit dystopian. Those kind of remarks come to the surface. You see them all over social media. And I've never really felt it myself because the way I engage with my VR headsets and VR products is for fun and escapism in short bursts. I view my Quest, my Pico, a big screen beyond if I had one, HTC, Pimax, I view them all as fun escapism, an extension of my gaming life. That's how I interact with these devices and that's the purpose that they serve for me. Escapism, fun, a bit of fitness and gaming. But with Apple Vision Pro, for the first time ever, I've felt that little pang of, oh, it, it is a bit dystopian. From the very first reveal, where there's the guy watching back the memories of his kids in spatial video, which is a very cool feature, do not get me wrong. Reliving memories in full 3D and seeing them, incredible. But I can't shake the fact that it is very dystopian. And this is the first device, mass market device as well, from a company like Apple that does want your attention for more of the day than just gaming. It wants to be the thing that you consume on. It wants you to use it as your primary source of screens when you're working, 
living, enjoying entertainment. This thing wants more of your time than just a Quest 3 or a Quest 2 or a Pico, or it certainly does in its marketing. I can feel the irreparable damage that mobile phones and a constant attachment to screens has done to me over the course of my life. I was born in 1987, so I grew up primarily without mobile phones and without the internet, and then they were introduced into my life. I used to be able to sit on my sofa and watch an entire series of a show that I love. That in itself, probably not very healthy, but I remember when I first got into Breaking Bad and I would binge an entire series in a day. It was crazy and I could give it my full attention. I could sit and watch movies back to back and absolutely adore everything about them, really absorb everything that was happening. But as the years have gone on, I now feel an almost impulsive reactionary twitch to grab my phone constantly. If I put a movie on, I'm reaching for my phone within 10-15 minutes. I'm opening Twitter. I scroll. I close Twitter. I open Instagram. I scroll. I close Instagram. I open Pokemon Go. I'll catch a Pokemon. I open Twitter again. I check my email. I check Discord. And before I know it, I'm back to the film and it's passed me by. 20-30 minutes are gone and my attention span is genuinely irreparably damaged by how reliant I am on my mobile phone and how many screens I'm subjected to every single day for huge portions of my day. I cannot imagine anything worse than working and living inside of an Apple Vision Pro with screens all around me. I want to have fun in a VR headset and then put it away and live in the real world for the rest of the day. And it is a little bit dystopian to see people out and about. And don't get me wrong, I'm pretty confident 99.9% .9 of them are doing it for clicks, for engagement, and maybe even rage baiting. But it is still a little bit dystopian to see people out and about with an Apple Vision Pro on their head like it's the most normal thing in the world. People in a grocery store using a floating list in the Apple Vision Pro to do their grocery shopping rather than just using your phone or a piece of paper. And again, I know I'm, I was saying the phone's a bad thing, but it's a much more simple thing to use. But I've seen people doing all kinds of crazy things in the Apple Vision Pro, and a lot of it is going to be just for clicks, but it is a little bit dystopian. This thing seems to ask for more stock in your life and more time in your life, and it wants you to use it to do more everyday tasks than a Quest or a Pico or a big screen or whatever it might be. And that is a bit dystopian to me. I love VR. I don't want to live my life in a VR headset. I don't want to black out the real world and live inside a head-mounted display. And Apple Vision Pro's use case right now seems to be primarily for doing just that, gaming. I primarily use my VR devices for gaming, for that form of escapism. Whether it's the Quest 3, the Quest 2, the PSVR 2, the Pico, whatever it is I'm using, I'm usually using it for gaming. So when Apple came out and announced that the Vision Pro wouldn't be shipping with any kind of controllers, I kind of knew at that point that it was done for in terms of any real, tangible gaming experiences. Now don't get me wrong, I am not hating on hand tracking. I've played some great hand tracked VR games. I've had a lot of fun with hand tracked VR experiences. But when it comes to large scale, tangible, complex VR gaming, I truly believe we will always need a set of controllers. Simple things like moving your character through a 3D world whilst performing actions doesn't feel right with hand tracking, not for me anyway. And there's a noticeable lag in any kind of hand tracking game I've tried. And people have already reported that on the Vision Pro when playing things like Synth Riders. But I think the biggest thing for me is no tangible feedback. Having that tangible feedback when you do something in game to tell you that you've done it, to tell you that you've successfully pulled off that action is so meaningful for a gamer, for someone like me. And it's a reason why I absolutely adore the PSVR 2 Sense controllers. They are amazing. Those adaptive triggers, the resistance on them, stunning. It elevates games, especially FPS games, to a completely different level. I cannot imagine, even with the best hand tracking in the world, playing a first-person shooter, story-driven campaign game, let's say, on an Apple Vision Pro. Now, some people have said and used the hand tracking only element 
for games as a pro when selling the Apple Vision Pro because it means that the games are far more accessible to average consumers. And, you know, they are technically right. It's easier to understand for someone if you jump in and you just have to use your hands to interact with the elements in front of you. It makes perfect sense. I could put an Apple Vision Pro onto my mum who doesn't play games. She would understand how to interact with the elements in the environment with her hands. It makes perfect sense. But those kind of normal consumers who aren't looking to learn or aren't looking to use advanced technology like a controller aren't the people out there spending three and a half thousand dollars to buy an Apple Vision Pro. This thing is not marketed towards normal consumers. I've seen people say it's a very consumer friendly device. It's consumer friendly in every department except for probably the biggest one that matters. That's the price point. So yes, hand tracking is a cool and simple way to engage with games and it can be amazing. But I don't think you're ever going to make any in-depth, meaningful, exciting, immersive VR experiences that I personally would want to play with only hand tracking. I've seen a few come very close, but my favorite VR experiences all take place with controllers where I have tactile feedback, I have haptics, and I have enough buttons and combinations and inputs to be able to pull off exceptionally complex things and make me feel like I'm part of those worlds. So it was never going to win me over for gaming. And all of the previews and reviews I've seen have cemented and confirmed that. So yeah, that's basically everything I wanted to say about the Apple Vision Pro. Don't get me wrong, once again, I'm really happy that Apple have entered into the XR industry. It's an amazing thing. It can only be an amazing thing to have a company like that making a product like this and coming into a medium that you love that needs some attention. It's going to push the industry forward. It's going to push the conversation forward and a rising tide lifts all ships. I think that's the phrase I might be paraphrasing. And it's also great to see so many people just enjoying this new piece of tech, this exciting, futuristic, bizarre piece of tech that people are getting to go hands on with and they're having a good time. But the one thing I can't shake, the one idea I can't get over is every single review I've seen, whether they're VR enthusiasts, tech enthusiasts or just Apple fans, all of them have this air of a person who doesn't quite know how this cool piece of tech will fit into their everyday lives. Where this piece of tech fits into everyday society right now. It feels like it's a piece of tech that's come too soon. We're not ready for it. We're not ready to work and live in head mounted displays, mainly because they're not small enough yet. The form factor isn't comfortable enough yet. It's not subtle enough yet. It's not discreet enough yet. I don't think people on a mass market level will really accept this kind of tech to work and live in until it's much smaller, much more discreet, and basically still allows us to have the FOV that our eyes have so we feel connected to the physical world that we're sitting within. It's cool to have a bunch of floating screens, but I think only a very, 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 very small percentage of people want to experience that on a daily basis for eight hours with a head mounted display on. It's a cool piece of tech from the future, but it's arrived too early. We're not there yet. I don't need an Apple Vision Pro, which is why you won't see one on this channel. The only reason that I would buy one for this channel would have been to make YouTube videos to get some clicks, and it's just not worth it. It's not worth buying something and showcasing it to you guys just because I want to make a video to maybe get some views. It's just not worth it. Not for me, not for my bank account, not for my family, because I'd be making reckless financial decisions, and it would be something that would sit on my shelf. I'm certain I would be looking to sell it after a couple of months, but that's just my personal opinion. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please do leave a like, drop a comment, hit subscribe, all that good stuff, and I'll see you soon for another one. Take care, everyone. Peace out.